If I had to pick the hardest game of the Souls formula, for me it would have to be Dark Souls 1. So to prepare myself for the pain that the Shadow of the Urchery DLC was going to inflict on me, I decided to go back for seconds at Lordran, only this time I'm spicing things up a bit. I randomized the game so that any enemy can appear at any place, and any item other than key items can be located anywhere. And to make the deal extra sweet, I'd also forced myself to use every item I pick up, so I don't know, if I find myself on the way to Ornstein and Smo overburdened, I might just have to deal with that. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video, and don't forget to follow me on Twitch to watch these challenges live, and subscribe to the channel to help out a lot. After a heavy night of drinking in Lordran, I wake up in a prison cell. I load up a corpse and make my escape. On the way I run into a familiar face which we will visit later, and make my way to the Asylum Demon. Our demon replacement couldn't quite fit in the door, so I made a quick run to save him from his shame. On the way though, I picked up my new gear, paid a visit to Oscar, and hauled ass to the boss room, only our gargoyle friend keeps making a mess and he spawned outside of the room. So that's strike two, and that's strike three. Right. You're dead. Hey, we got him. After taking a Kruber and waking up in Firelink, I immediately land my hands on a new and better weapon. I started running around the land trying to find lighter loot as I was still fat rolling, and I landed my hands on a sage robe and scooted my butt to the Grab first this. boss. Ah, we're good. After killing a rat and picking up the heavy ass tower shield, I realized that it wouldn't be possible to maintain a steady build, so I should just focus on finding solutions for every boss as I go, like our second boss, the Capra Demon. Now normally, the fight against the Capra Demon is very annoying because he has two dogs in his arena, but since they're not around him this time, this fight is pretty easy, and he goes down on the second try. And double poke. And we're done. Another boss down. Let's go. With the new souls from the demon, I leveled up, then spent 30 minutes contemplating my life decisions and dying on the way to the twin gargoyles. Also, look at this shit. The curse buildup from the basilisk kept going after I died, which, if you don't know, in Dark Souls 1, it cuts down your health in half. And purging stones aren't something that I can really rely on in a randomizer, so... Fun. Well... I'm nothing if not a master of rolling with the punches, so even with the cards stacked against me, I still had faith that I can take down the twin bosses. As always, Pinwheel is kind of a pushover, and with the help of the Taurus Demon, he goes down very easily, then all that's left is to give the Taurus Demon the old 1-2 treatment before he goes down as well. Now that we rung the first bell, it was time to visit the best place in the world, Dark Souls 2. I start sprinting towards the bonfire before running into a formidable foe. After proving once again that fat rolls and curse are the intended way to play Dark Souls 1, as they inflict the most amount of pain, I manage to find my campfire again. I then go on to loot a few more corpses, amongst them finding Crystal Halberd, which had ridiculous damage, so you could understand why I ran straight into the fight with Quayleg with it, as I could use any advantage I can get. Let's see what we have instead of Quayleg. Huh. Oh, wait, that's a gargoyle. I think that's a gargoyle. Uh, I wonder if he one-shots me, though. And he does one-shot me. Right then and there, I knew that this fight is going to test my patience. Fighting the gargoyle with fat rolls and only half of your HP is a devilish situation only Satan can create. I spent a lot of time fighting this gargoyle, but I eventually managed to overcome the foul beast and went to spend my spoils as fast as possible. Now that we got the second bell rung, it was time for me to get back to Firelink. After 15 minutes of what can, uh, only be described as hell, really, my chat pointed out that I could use the elevator once again to go back up, and it's not long before I make it back home. The new vendor that appears in Firelink does bear good news, as he is the first NPC that sells us purging stones, so now that, that my soul is finally liberated, I can make my way to Snake Fortress, only this time it's filled with much worse enemies who make this carnival funhouse much more enjoyable. I summon all of my power to pull off my impeccable Indiana Jones impression, make a small drop of faith, and go to challenge my new randomized boss. Oh, Priscilla, what's up? Luckily for us, Priscilla falls victim to the stick to the ass and smash R1 ancient technique. So although she did casually one-shot me, it was only a matter of time for my powerful mashing abilities to overwhelm her, and we make it to the land of the kings. The notorious walk to Ornstein and Smo was fairly chill. No scary things on the rafters, and the archer's replacement was nothing special, so I quickly made my way to Salaire. 
I took a second to show chat my ghetto ass lunch. You roll it up like a blunt. Okay. <laughs> bon appetit. Then it was time to pay a visit to Sornstein and O, or better known as the Asylum Demon and Pinwheel, who I did not die to. On one of my attempts, I realized that I could abuse the Asylum Demon to completely obliterate Pinwheel, but behind phase one hit a much bigger, scarier, and much more red Fire Sage Demon. So, even though I had my tactic for phase one, I felt like I needed to change in gear because the fat whirls were just not hidden. And since I already looted up pretty much everything in the castle, I decided to resort I'm to sorry, a cardinal sorry. sin. One more. Yeah. Give me your items. Be good, please. That's the face of a man who knows he fucked up. Luckily for me, I picked up a few souls on the way here, so I was able to use the my dad is rich technique to get out of this sticky situation. I still had to find better gear, so I spent the next 30 minutes running around before getting my hands on the shuttle. I then leveled up once more, upgraded my gear, and went back to the boss to try my luck again. As you could probably guess, the shuttle was dealing nothing but small mosquito bites to the fire sage, but anything is possible with midrolls, so even though I get bonked a couple of times, I I still managed to dance around the fire sage for long enough that after 11 minutes of battle, I finally poured my water all over this oh, fire dude, demon. It's so good to be free. After shooting my shot at Guinevere and obtaining the Lord Vessel, it was time for me to collect the four great runes. I found an infinite money glitch at the kin which I definitely I'm did sorry. not abuse and started making my way to Sif to collect my first Lord Soul. Going through Duke's archives was the usual pleasurable funhouse it normally is, only oh, this time with no. better and new surprises in the randomizer. I do manage to find some ways to outsmart the local folks before taking my scripted ass whooping from Seath. Having flashbacks to the beginning of the game, I wake up in a prison cell again, get absolutely obliterated for picking up a key, and make my way through Duke's archives in record-breaking time. I start making my way through Walter White's home and threw out praying to Miyazaki that the next boss will be easy. To everyone's shocking surprise, the next boss was in fact not easy. So not easy that there was no way I would ever win against him with only 30 damage. So I make the same choice of changing up my focus. I went to fight the ceaseless fire sage to open up the demon ruins. Okay? And here things started getting... messy. On my way to the next boss, I pick up the Dusk Crown Ring, which, if you don't know, cuts down your HP by half. On top of that, the boss replacement was Super Ornstein and I was doing 22 damage, so this option had to wait. I started pathing to the catacombs to try to find better loot, which was super fun. Failing to find anything good, I decided to take a trip back to the Undead Asylum. But after Smo made me eat his ass a couple of times, this option also seemed very shitty. The next logical step was to kill the NPCs in Firelink, obviously, but that sadly also amounted to nothing. It was time to give Darkroot Dungeon a shot. I used the Seal of Artorius and make my way to the Dago fight. Who's Sif? What? You again? So yeah, turns out the mod can randomize the same boss to appear in several arenas, so I had two Sanctuary Guardians I had to fight. But hey. Surely I'd pick up some loot that will make this challenge super easy, right? Never mind. Let's see what's hiding behind the moonlight butterfly. Pinwheel, okay. Alright. Rip pinwheel. Give me something good, please. Yes! Oh my god, a different ring. Yes, oh thank you pinwheel, my man. With another proof that Pinwheel is the best boss ever, I made my way to the depths for items. I upgrade my Great Axe to plus 9 and go give the bosses another shot. Unfortunately, both me and Fat Rolls are useless against Sanctuary Guardian, Ornstein does more damage than my dad did to my childhood, and the Sif replacement was even worse than Sif since I had to break this stupid crystal every time I walked in the arena. So I did what only made sense, which was take a break for the day. The next day I came back with rejuvenated powers. My first goal was to find a new weapon so I went back to hell. I am in the catacombs. The loot here was pretty good 
I even got the ring for Gwendolyn, but sadly I couldn't escape my chunky physique. At last, I do reach Pinwheel's cave somehow, and luckily for me it was actually Pinwheel in there, so even though my damage was absolutely disgraceful, to say the least, with the use of a few humanities and absolutely godlike target focus, I put this stick figure abomination to rest. Hey look, a ring for each finger. Since I didn't want to explore the catacombs more just yet, I went back to Anne Orlando to see what Gwendolyn was hiding. But other than the Taurus demon, a disformed cutscene and a light talisman, he didn't really have much to offer. A quick detour to the Darkwood Garden lands me a weapon and a helmet, also a big bonk. With everything else failing, I thought let's give Ornstein another try. And a quick drop down reveals a bonfire really near the fight. So now I had a bonfire, the right of kindling, and a decent weapon. That's literally the Holy Trinity, which meant that I was more than ready for this fight. Don't get it twisted though, Super Ornstein fat loaded will never be an easy thing, so he does hit me with his cheeky slams, but soon after that I'm the one that makes him eat shit. Our next boss comes very shortly. Wait, let's play the floor is lava. You lose. Centipede Demon dying means that Lost Isolith is open for us, and that means a whole bunch of loot is open for us. I make a quick run to the boss to see who replaced the Bed of Chaos, and lo and behold, there he was, DJ Calhead. So now that the Sanctuary Guardian was standing behind three mandatory bosses for me, I had to get a build running to start thinning the herd. New Orlando Ruins was the only place that I hadn't plundered yet, so that was my next location. Luckily for me though, most of the enemies AI here were disabled, so I had a pretty easy time running through here. On the ledge, outside, I find the Hammer of Vamis, which allowed me to mid-roll. But after testing the damage on the Guardian, I still wanted a better weapon for the fight. I went back to New Londo to get the key to the seal, where I found Nido's sword as well, so I decided to go back to test it on my good old friend Smo. At first, he was opposed to the thought of me killing him, but slowly I made him open up to the idea. So much that I could swear that I saw a grin on his face when I delivered the killing blow. Unfortunately, Smo wasn't hiding anything interesting and even though I considered going into the painted world, I decided not to since you can't leave it before you beat it. Running around firing, killing enemies makes me land my hands on the pickaxe, which was all the luck that I needed at that point. I spend no time before upgrading it to plus 10 and go to test my new damage on Sif. Okay, here we go. <gasps> 251, that's triple the damage we dealt. Stagger him? Ah, I got greedy, I got greedy. My bad, my bad. Okay, this is... This is it. And... We got him. Okay, one more. Ah! Uh, jump attack! Uh, no? Okay, bye-bye. <laughs> oh my god, we killed him, dude. Don't replace my weapon. Of course. Of course he's gonna give me a pike. Cruel irony aside, I quickly upgrade the pike to plus 10 and glide down the rail to insanity. During the fight, I found out that if I stand in this corner, I can use the pike's range to attack the sanctuary guardian and he couldn't get to me. That means that I spent the next two minutes poking sanctuary guardian in the throat with my stick like he's the hack to a girl. And that led me to my first boss hole. Next up were the four kings, but sadly it seems like the mod breaks their AI as well, so all we get is one chunky king that barely dies and a Girl demon friend. with a questionable hitbox. <laughs> two down, two to go. Up next, a third round with a familiar face. This guardian was definitely the toughest of them all so far, so he makes sure to pay respect to his dead comrades, but that's not enough to stop a determined man with a pointy stick. Fuck you! I'll bleep that out. Nah, fuck him. Never mind, I won't. <laughs> now all that was left was the final Lord Soul, and I needed a small boost of morale. Nito is not gonna be a problem, Gwyn is not gonna be a problem, even if they're Sanctuary Guardians. This is the only problem that we have left. Actually getting to Nito. It turned out that I was mostly right about this, as I spent the next 15 minutes dying over and over again before making it to Nito's arena. Who is this? There's no way, chat. Can I re-randomize this? So yeah, 
Sanctuary Guardian was behind four of the 12 mandatory bosses in our run. And to make things extra nice, now he's surrounded by his skeleton homies, which makes this fight so much worse. So I decided to bend the rules a little bit in my favor and re-randomize the bosses so I could rid myself of the curse of the Sanctuary Guardian. Oh? It's Priscilla! One, two, three, goodbye. We're gonna win! We're going to Gwyn! To Gwyn, we're going indeed. I make a leap towards the finish line and offer my soul to the Lord of the Sock Puppets frame. Drink. Sanctuary Guardian, here I come. Please, please. Manus! Yes! Actually a cool boss. Manus is actually the perfect final fight for this run. The final fight of the DLC being fought with the legendary Plin Plin Plon in the background. This no. is what Miyazaki actually intended hey, for us to have. Less I equipped the silver pendant that I got way back as it will help me deflect a lot of Manus's second phase attacks. Unless you suck yeah, like me. What now? Well, I used the pendant! But for the most of it, all that was left was to get good at this fight and eventually the run will come. Wow, this fucker really likes these attacks, huh? Alright, let's go, Manus. I have no potions left. <gasps> humanities! I gotta find a time to equip humanities. Unless... Unless I'm a god? One more. We're done. Clean. Clean. Blown. And that's how I beat Dark Souls 1. Enemy and items randomized with the use what you get rule set. I really hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe and come watch me live on Twitch. But till the next one, stay natty. Peace out.